We correctly condemn the left's shameful ruse in using this recession to pass an agenda that they've wanted for 40 years. But what about the conservatives who are using our defeat as an excuse to remake the Republican Party in their image? I want to be very honest with you today. I can't stand here and complain about the speck in the eyes of liberals without pointing out the beam in some of the conservative eyes. Some fiscal conservatives sometimes will ostracize social conservatives, and I want to tell you this is ridiculous for two reasons. First, social conservatives stand for strong traditional families and the dignity and the value and intrinsic worth of every individual life. We are the party and the movement that believes in the power, the strength, and the dignity of every individual from the time of his conception until God has decided that his life has come to a conclusion. And those of us who are fiscal conservatives need to understand that we will never meet our goals of limited government, less government spending, and lower taxes if we don't have strong families. Because if families don't do their jobs, government will end up trying to pick up the slack. It's that simple. Children whose parents never marry or children whose parents divorce are likely, more likely, to grow up in poverty, drop out of school, become involved with drugs and crime, end up in poor health, and earn less over their lifetimes, which ultimately means that citizens become tax takers rather than tax payers, citizens who become dependent rather than self-reliant, more money than is needed for Medicaid, food stamps, and prisons. So the fortunes of social conservatives and fiscal conservatives are interwoven. Let's not have a divorce. Let's have a reconciliation. Let's put this movement back together, understanding that both of the wings of the party, the left and the right, the right, the left, are needed in order for the conservative movement to fly. We didn't lose because of social conservatives. We lost because we wanted somehow to be the party that forgot what we stood for. I want to re remind us all of something. We didn't lose because we wanted to keep unworn babies from ending up in a wastebasket. We lost elections because we were tied to too many people who would spend $1,400 on a wastebasket like the clueless John Thane. A poll just before the election asked which class each candidate's policies would favor, and 59% said that John McCain would favor the rich, only 11% said he would favor the middle class. Now, whether that was true or not, the point is we can't win with numbers like that. We cannot win as the party of the $1,400 wastebasket and the $87,000 area rug. Where I come from, $1,400 will buy you three college classes at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, and $87,000 isn't the price of a rug, it's the price of a house. So let's stop pretending that we lost because people were worried about losing access to abortions because what they were really worried about was losing their jobs, their homes, their health insurance, their retirement funds. Ronald Reagan won because he understood this. He did not win because he threw social conservatives under the bus. He won by convincing those who drove the bus or worked in the assembly lines and in the office parks that the Republican Party was going to be their party too. And we lose that connection we lose the election. That's why we have to be a unified conservative movement.